So because I've spent the last six years or so of my life working on a hypothesis theory or whatever you want to call it on quantum gravity or conjecture relating to quantum gravity, I, um, I thought I'd try and talk a little bit about black hole singularities since it's thought that any theory or any successful theory of quantum gravity ought to be able to explain what black hole singularities are, whether or not they're possible, etc, etc. So um, I'm going to get into this topic now with a little bit of background on what a singularity is, um, what black holes are, um, my notion concerning quantum gravity, which I'll explain in due course, um, doesn't actually uh, have, I don't suspect, all that much relevance to this issue. But um, I'll, I'll carry on nonetheless um, and try to explain some possible ideas I might have about what singularities are and how and why they might be possible. So, um, okay, so what is a singularity? A singularity is a point of infinite density. So um, what do we have with the density equation? We have mass over volume. Mass over volume is equal to density, which we mark with the Greek letter rho. Um, it looks like a, a sort of a P that was slanted a bit. You know, like, uh, that's like, this is rho in the Greek alphabet. Um, and yeah, this, is it possible? I'm really, in the, re the regimes of the universe that I think about most often, um, singularity, I'd like to think of it not possible, because um, there's a kind of a gravitational field or gravitational fields permeating the universe, which are formed of um, electrons appearing and disappearing once every microsecond. That's um, how I think about the gravitational background or the gravitational fields of the universe. So it's something to say within those regimes, it's not actually possible to have a singularity. But um, I think that might contradict very possibly what we've actually learned from experiments with the LHC, that some singularity is possible at certain energy levels um, with two uh, colliding protons, that we can manufacture singularities in a, in a laboratory setting. And um, what was detected at the Atlas C CMS detectors of, uh, of the LHC in Switzerland was, um, yeah, a singularity appearing very briefly. Um, and these two protons falling into the singularity and having all their mass energy converted into very high energy gamma rays. There are two of them, which um, were the decay products of um, the so-called Higgs boson. Um, I suppose, yeah, if you if you do hit two protons together at a high enough energy, um, I suppose they would form a singularity. If, if we're taking black holes to not be very, very, very weird, um, and we're comparing them, or we're considering that their composition at least reflects the composition of the rest of the universe in terms of um, uh, leptons and quarks, and bosons. If we're assuming that um, the basic content in terms of fundamental particles, in terms of uh, the standard model of fundamental constituents of the universe that we're aware of, um, yeah, maybe it has to be formed of something composed of quark gluon plasmas, um, photon fluids, photon plasmas, whatever, what have you. Maybe it's something like that. You know, it's like very, very strange. Maybe Bose-Einstein condensates even. And I'm thinking this because, um, or a quasi-quark-gluon plasma Bose-Einstein condensate. Something like that, since maybe the pressure is so great in those regimes that it's effectively slowed the movement of all the particles in the very centre of a black hole to nothing or close to nothing. Maybe it is possible even, but it works like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's a very bizarre regime of, of nature. It's not one that I would claim to understand particularly well. Um, and I just treat it all as like, if, but, maybe this. And I've um, put a little bit of um, thought into what's known as the yang Mills mass gap problem in my time, since um, I was motivated to do so actually by this issue and through attempting to understand nuclear physics, i.e. the physics of atomic nuclei, 
which um, is, again, not something I would necessarily refer to myself as a specialist within. Um, my understanding of quantum chromodynamics, uh, the, the theory of um, the strong nuclear force, um, is not all that well refined, and I haven't really given those areas too much thought. But the more I think about it, the more I think that perhaps, yeah, like um, a proton in a, in a nucleus of an atom is sort of like a little black hole or something. And it's absorbing photons, and the photons absorbed up the gluons, and perhaps the strong interaction really just relies on the exchanges of W particles, also W bosons. I was thinking maybe something like that's possible. And then um, you know the the residual strong forces are carried by uh, pions, is it or pi leptons? No, um, not pi leptons. Those um, pions or kaon. I can't remember, but um, yeah, I I suppose something like that's possible. Oxygen W particles. And I've thought already about a, an idea of a, a hypothetical gravito electro weak interaction um, linking to the gravitational force via the exchange of um, a W plus and a W minus between an electron and a proton. So I guess it makes sense that um, if that's possible. It also seems somewhat likely to me that quarks exchange W particles between themselves, and um, that actually the uh, photons entering the nucleus could, in a sense, be trying to force the quarks apart within the hadrons rather than bind them together. <laughs> and that quantum chromodynamics is totally wrong. Sorry, Murray Gell, man. I like you in theory, I don't think I like you so much in principle or practice. So it's, yeah, it is worth thinking about uh, singularities, what their particle basis could be. Could they be uh, incredibly compacted and very, very high energy superpositions of gamma rays? So. I suppose, in essence, the sort of um, question you're asking there is, could they be, uh, yeah, large superpositions of gamma rays, i.e. glue balls, if we are taking this idea that gluons are just superposed photons, if we're taking that seriously. So what's um, the minimum mass bound on glue balls? That's then the Yang-Mills mass gap problem. Or is it the upper mass bound? In any case, I think um, that comes kind of comes down to the problem: of how do we define a glue ball, right? And what volume are we allowing a glue ball to exist within? That's also the problem, there, is it not? Um. So yeah. I wonder if like, there's a Navier-Stokes like, application of this, I get too many like, problems if I'm going to solve it. I'm going to try Wing's one cover, perhaps. But yeah, um, yeah, an infinitesimal of volume would, of course, allow a singularity to emerge. So, that's what you need. Is it not? And a certain mass, any kind of mass, any mass of any positive number, over an infinitesimal would yield infinity. And again, I, I, infinity's physical, or have we not learned how to count high enough yet? Or low enough? I don't know. <laughs> My theory's not really about singularities, per se. It's just about cosmological issues and gravitational fields, dark matter, dark energy, so. Thank you everyone for watching, bye bye, love you lots.